for your interest in becoming Minecraft Education Certified. My name is Kathleen Receiver and I'm one of the JCPS Digital Innovation Leaders here in JCPS and I am the lead for Teacher Digital Agility. So congratulations for wanting to become more digitally agile and learn new things to help engage your students. What we're going to talk about in this brief 20 minutes is the Minecraft community that you can join, how to get your Minecraft educator badges and where those courses are, of course, celebrating your victory on Twitter, and also looking on Twitter for other resources for Minecraft lesson ideas, how your students can write in Minecraft and create, and then some more resources that have been provided to us by fantastic teachers here in JCPS. And then lastly, how to fill out the JCPS digital agility form so we know what certifications you hold. The purpose of this training is really to see how you can learn more about using Minecraft in your classroom and where to go for the resources as well as how to get that badge for certification. It's not necessarily to show you all the ins and outs of Minecraft, but I will for sure give you some information on where you can go to start practicing. And trust me, your students will always know more than you, and that is okay. All right, so the Minecraft community is a great place for you to create a profile and sign up for their their newsletter that they have. In that newsletter, they are always updating you on new lessons that they have in their resource files for educators and um, just other information that teachers are using around the globe with Minecraft. Now, that is the actual community. And then what I'm gonna show you here in a moment is the Teacher Academy. So the Teacher Academy is where you will go to actually see these courses that you will go through in order to become a Minecraft Education Edition certified teacher. So there are 11 different courses and they have three sections. So there's the beginner, intermediate, and advanced. And you can take your time going through these courses. You can go as fast or slow as you need to. Um, some of the beginners may, beginner courses may be a little bit easier for you, so you won't need to spend as much time on them. It does say that every course takes an hour, but I did not take that long when completing these courses. So you will answer the questions, um, read the information. There's five question quiz after each course. And if you don't pass it, then no big deal. You can just retake it again until you do. So that's the great part about this opportunity. You don't have to pay for it like you do for the Google certification exam. Uh, you don't have to wait for a long period of time. If you get something wrong, you simply can just retake it again, see what you missed, retake it again as many times as you need to, to pass that course. And then once you pass all 11 courses, you will be that Minecraft, Minecraft educator um, certified educator. And I'm going to show you the actual website in just a moment. So the courses are set up in this way. You're going to watch a few videos to learn how to do a certain um, step or, or tool in Minecraft. There may be some PDFs that you can read through to get some more knowledge about that to certain topic. And then you're going to reflect by practicing it and then taking that quiz at the end. So if I go right now to the teacher center and all of these are linked below on the YouTube channel, all of these links that I'm discussing today and these resources, you will first need to up here in the top right corner, you're going to want to sign in. So it says start the learning path and I can scroll through and see what I'm going to learn. And many times people uh, forget to click that sign in button up at the top. So this just shows you what I've already said. You get the beginner, intermediate, and advanced in order to get that certificate. And then here are those different 11 different courses. So you can see as I went through halfway, I got my beginner badge and then my intermediate badge. And then lastly, I got my uh, final badge for the advanced level. I don't know. I'm trying to record and now I have to stop because you're talking. 
I don't know where he is. I'm I'm working. I don't know. I don't know. I'm working. Elizabeth, I am working and recording and I have to start over now. I don't know. As you can see here, the path progression, you have the beginner, intermediate, and advanced. And as I scroll through these 11 courses, here's that duration that I told you about. You can open any of the courses, but as you get through them, you will earn these three badges, which in turn gives you the final educator, uh, certified educator badge. So if I go back up to the top and click on sign in, mine will look a little bit different. This is obviously a uh, work account. So Minecraft for Education, students and staff all have access to the education edition, but they must sign in with their JCPS email address and password. So once I get signed in, mine again will look a little bit different because I've already a little bit different because I've already received my badge and it tells you that I've completed it in November. But if I scroll down, again, it talks to you about what, how you will go through the process. And then you can see here, I scored 90%. So I didn't get them all right. And I could retake it if I wanted to, or I can click to go into the actual course. Again, if there was a resource or something I wanted to learn again. So um, I'm not sure what's going on there, but this is the first course and it says that I have completed it. I'm going to re I can resume and go back in. So what kind of game has Minecraft been described as? It's a collaborative maybe? Nope. Eh. So up here at the top, I can go back and get to a different course. So this is the teacher center, and this is where you would go for that certification. The other thing that I talked about was the newsletter, which is here. So you can enter your email and where you are and submit, and you'll get that newsletter. And they do not email me a whole lot, maybe once a month. So it's not a bunch of emails that they will send. And then also the resources for educators. Here's those featured worlds I was telling you about that they do um, email you about from time to time. And then it goes through to show you all of the world. So there are a lot of different pre-made worlds for you and lessons for you that are already made by subject and um, by content and grade level. And that's in the world library. Again, all these resources can be found right here under class resources. So all of these right here, the get trained under the get trained is where the teacher Academy is that link that I showed you a moment ago, as well as the community lessons. Um, there's different build challenges that you can assign to your students right in Google classroom. And then if you're having um, tech issues also. And the first lesson kit is really good. You can go through that to help you with how to actually play the game if that's something that you want to experience. And then there's more trainings below. So those are some of the resources and a great page to check out the Education Minecraft resource trainings. And I'll have that below the video in YouTube. Okay, so going back to this slide, celebrating. Twitter is a great place to go to celebrate. First of all, if you become certified, we want to hear about that. But also, you can search different hashtags. For example, Minecraft EDU. And you can find different ideas and things that teachers across the nation are sharing. So one person to follow would be Playcraft Learn. That is the actual Minecraft for Education Twitter account, and they give out great ideas, but also in JCPS, people are sharing to that hashtag as well. So sometimes you'll find the JCPS dig in hashtag, and you'll be able to find different Minecraft things, things that students and teachers are doing. Here we go. Here's one right here in the classroom. 
Uh, James Unger is our Minecraft for Education District Lead, so he is a great person to follow as well. He will constantly give out great information and share what others are doing in our district, so I would for sure follow him. So Twitter is a great PLN for all things, but also for, for Minecraft when you're starting out using it. Inside Minecraft, there is a section for coding. And back in December, when we had Hour of Code, we, you were able to go through an Hour of Code lesson. And actually, Minecraft still has that open. It's right here. So that's something you may want to check out for you and your students. Um, one thing that I want to mention in the inventory, I'm not going to go in big detail with this, but inside the inventory when students create a world or if you use one of the lessons that are pre-created for you there are different things that they can use for example the board slate and poster these these three tools the students can write inside of and or teachers can give instructions in a world which is how the templates are made so maybe it, the student has to do certain activities or things first within that world these are ways that that can be done. There's also the book and quill, which is what this image is you're looking at, page one of 20, where students can type text in the book and then also add pictures. And one thing that kids like to do is place the camera and then turn it around in front of whatever it is they created in the world and take a selfie and add that picture inside their book. So this is a way that students can reflect and write as they are going through a world and creating and learning. So those are two, um, or really three tools that are awesome to use for that. There is also a coding badge that you can get. So if you're interested in that, the Co Minecraft Coding Academy, there, it's eight courses that you can take to receive that coder badge. So that's another opportunity for you. And then there are many, many other um, Hour of Code lessons inside Minecraft. So it says over 150 coding curriculums for you and your students to explore. That was a lot of information in a short time, but hopefully you found a few of those things helpful. And what I'm going to do now is go through a couple of these resources that we have for you and um, kind of give you an introduction to some of the, the Minecraft world. Um, this bit.ly, the bit.ly forward slash capital JCPS digital agility is where you will go to fill out the form to tell us if you are certified in Minecraft or maybe Nearpod or um, Google, Apple. I would really appreciate you filling that out. And I do have stickers for the first 50 people, laptop stickers that I will be giving away either by mail or pony when we return to school. Okay, the first thing I wanna talk about and show you is our JCPS Minecraft website. So jcps.me forward slash M-E-E. -E. And the very first thing that you will see is this Minecraft education video. JCPS is actually um, a national model with Minecraft and Microsoft came and did an interview for with our students and teachers. So that's something we are really excited and proud of. So it's a two minute video. I would recommend checking that out. But up at the top, there are a few different resources for you. Uh, James Unger is the, like I said earlier, the district lead, and he has some videos on using Minecraft here. Also, the how to help section. This is the section I told you about earlier, but it's just linked here for you uh, with different webinars and what to do on the JCPS Chromebook. So students can use the Microsoft Education Edition on their Chromebooks. They will go to the Play Store and install it on their Chromebook. Um, there may be a few hiccups for some students. Some of the Chromebooks, it will not work, which means they probably need to be power washed or maybe there's a couple other problems you may run across, this is a great resource page for you. And if this doesn't help, you can always email James or myself, Kathleen Receiver, and we can try and troubleshoot for you. This talks about the different multiplayer and how students can join each other in the world, and I'll talk about that in a minute. There's content ideas and then certification, and lastly, resources. So this is a great page for you to bookmark and use. And that's our jcps.me forward slash M-E-E. -E. And we talked about the educator resource page. 
And the next four slides shows that I'm going to show you quickly are from a teacher, Rebecca Ferguson, and she shared these with us. She actually made a pre-session set up in preparation for her, a Minecraft club that she did after school. So she goes through on these slides and, and talks about what students need to do first before they even begin Minecraft. And I highly recommend this. Once you get through this short little bit of pain, especially for your younger students, and get everything installed and get them logged in, the gain from it will be amazing and you will not regret it. So she goes through and shows them how, what keys to use, how to use the mouse, what's a skin, an agent, block, the blocks, all of these different tips for the students to know before they do the lesson in Minecraft. So it's a great slide tutorial that she has so graciously given us to, to use and for you. Another one that she has is the um, digital agility. So for the digital um, agility, I don't know why that's not that's marked out there. Um, you can go through, not digital agility, I'm so sorry. For the Minecraft um, digital citizenship, excuse me. I believe that's what this one is. Oh. For the first Minecraft lesson, again, she reviews which, how the keys that you use to play Minecraft, but then she goes through and gives you the actual lesson for creative exploration. So this is the first lesson she does with the students after they've signed in. She talks about the hot bar at the bottom, how to access the inventory, many different um, kind of beginner things, how you put the book and quill and the, and the uh, maybe the poster or the camera in your inventory. So this is great for you as the teacher, but also for your kids if they're the ones that aren't sure how to play Minecraft. The second lesson is the digital citizenship lesson. Again, she goes over how to use the controls in Minecraft. And then there is a lesson here on digital citizenship for you. And the last one that she's provided is a guided practice acti activity building a treehouse. So this is the lesson for building a treehouse that she did with her students. So those four resources, um, she's an elementary teacher, but you can use them and adapt them to however you need and however, however you see fit. And lastly, I want to actually get into Minecraft. So as I said, if you're using a Windows machine, you can go to Google and simply type Minecraft Education Edition Download. And when you search that, the first thing that comes up will be the page on Minecraft where you can install Minecraft on your machine. So I'm currently on a Mac, but if you're using a Windows machine here, and if you are on a Chromebook and type that, this will take you right to that download. So you wanna make sure you're installing the Education Edition. And once you install and you open it up, you will have to log in with your JCPS email and password, and then you will get to this page. So on this page, this is my Alexander, what's the person called in Minecraft? The person, what are they called? What? No, like your 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 character that you use. Here I can change the skin by clicking on the hanger. And students can personalize their character in Minecraft. So that is always fun for them. So that may be something you want to do at first. Let them choose their skin. And then here you will see the settings. One important thing to point out, down here at the bottom, in order for students to join each other in a world, they must all have the same version. So currently it's 1.14.50. It'll probably change soon when they take off this hour of code button. But always check to see what the latest download is and you can do that by going to that this page right here um, to find out what the latest download is that's usually the number one problem when a new version comes out students aren't able to join one another so if i go ahead and click on play here i can view my worlds i don't have a lot on this computer or i can create and i can create a new world from there here is a library of worlds already made for us, and I'll show you that in just a moment. Um, down here, if I want to play with someone else, I can click Join World, and they will give me a code to join, and I'll show you how to get that code in a second. 
Here, if I my teacher has given me a uh, downloaded world, maybe one that they created themselves, this is where te students, excuse me, would go to import the world. I'll just click on import and navigate to where it saves. So if I assign it in Google Classroom, I assign the file in Google Classroom. When students click on that on their Chromebook, it's going to automatically download it. So when they click on import, they will be able to click on their downloads and import that world that the teacher made. And that may be a little bit more advanced, so don't worry if that stresses you out. Just kind of skip over that for now. It's good information for later. When I click on View Library, I have lessons here, those monthly build challenges that I showed you briefly on the resource page. The um, lessons and the challenges inside the game mode are a little bit different. There aren't as many of them as there are here under Educator Resources. So if I go here to find lessons, I'm going to find a lot more lessons than what I will will right here, simply because the web can hold more than this download. Um, so if I were to go to science, say, and I'm going to do the life cycle of a bee, so I want to view the lesson. It says eight to ten year olds, so you're talking what second, third grade. Um, scroll when I scroll down. Many times teachers want to click on download assets, but if you keep scrolling, here are these external resources. It gives you the National Geographic ge Geographic article on the topic, different um, topics here, and then there's supporting files. So this is what where you want to go. The teacher's guide, there's a worksheet and another worksheet if you wanted to use those. And this one may not have the world in it. So that might be a bad example. So when I click on the Bumblebee world, um, there's a download assets button here and many times teachers click that and don't scroll down. So if you scroll down here is where you'll find the Bumblebee Watch, um, the community to find, identify, and map bumblebee species in North America, and then the Bumblebee Minecraft World. You can download it right here. And then there's a teacher's guide and a worksheet if you chose to do that. So here is where if I click on that world, it's going to download it. And then I'm able to go to my classroom and assign that world to my students. I'm going to add a file. Just drag it in there or upload that file. So again, when students click on this file and on their Chromebook, it will open for the it'll download for them and then they are able to open it um, once they're inside Minecraft and in that import area. So kind of two things there showing you how to do that from the resources. Oops from the resource section on Minecraft, but then also you have different lessons here as well. It's easiest probably to do it on their website, but I'd like to come here to see if there's anything that I can look at that may be relevant to what I, what content or what standards I'm using. So just so you know, that's there. There's the biomes and worlds, lessons, the build challenges. These change and are a lot of fun. Um, and then down here, the how to play. So for my teachers that aren't so sure and they really feel like they need more practice after watching this, if you click on how to play and start here, these worlds are an introductory on how to use Minecraft. So it teaches you how to move, how to place and break, how to interact, how to use that camera and portfolio how to use those chalkboards, what's an NPC. Those are the non-character players in the game. Um, so you can go through and do these and maybe how do you move around, maybe even assign those to some of your students. So when I click on that world, here's that share link button. So see, I can post it to my Google Classroom right there. So that you may want to use these to introduce Minecraft to your students who aren't familiar with it. And I got that again. I know it's a lot of clicks. 
Once inside Minecraft, I clicked on View Library, and the How to Play is right here. So I hope that you were able to get a good introduction to how to find the teacher resources, how you can become a Minecraft for Education certified educator, and then also a few tips for teaching it with your students, as well as how you can play or learn to play better. One thing that I did forget to mention is when I'm inside my world, this world is saved on my machine. So students that have worlds, they are actually saved on their Chromebook or their iPad, whatever device they are using. Um, if they have to re-image the machine or power wash it, they will lose all of that data. So we wanna make sure that we export that file and save it. So to do that, when I press escape on my keyboard, I can save and exit or click settings. So if I click on settings and scroll all the way down, well, it's being slow. One thing I forgot to mention, to export the world and save it to your drive, if you click on the world and before you press play, click on settings. You can go down to the very bottom and this is where you will export the world to save it to your computer. And then that way you can upload it into your Google Drive or just save it on um, probably your Google Drive. Also, you can, this is where students can go to host a world or you could go to host a world. Um, up to 30 people can be in one world at a time. So when I click on escape, notice there's the little um, earth cube and then these people, when I click there, this is the code that I wanna give to my partner or to my students. So balloon, pickaxe, agent, cookie. And then they would type it that code in when, on the button where they click join world in the beginning, they would type that in. If it doesn't work, this refresh button sometimes needs to be done or the students are not all on the same version. I can click stop hosting 
here it is again start hosting so that is how you host a world once you're inside of a world you press escape and there it is and remember like i said up to 30 people can be in a world at one time